Welcome to Family Showdown, evening of shenanigans. Welcome, welcome. Super it's already online. Hello. And what do we have on the docket for this evening, good sir? Uh, hold on. Oh, oh. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> um, well, we haven't been on, we haven't done a chat, an official, like official, official chat since March 27th. Seems to be a trend. We seem to be having like a once a month monthly kind of chats, and then a lot of lists and other things. So we haven't talked cool with that. Talked in a while, so we're gonna go over new games, and we have a whole pile. Yes, we do. Of games that you one of us have played for the first time in the last month ish. Ish. Yes. So, you ready? We're gonna jump right in. We are. All right, let's do it. Pick if one. you have random things Pick one. to ask or interrupt, I'm gonna start with. This cute little game called Herbaceous. Uh, Jeff and Bailey showed me this game at the Falls Con. And Nessa and I fell in love with it. And we have shown it to the fam. It is popular. It is cute. You even said you liked it. It's a fluffy, light, little, artsy card game. Lovely. Lovely. I love it. The art is awesome. Yeah, I enjoyed it. it it's... What's my saying? It's super light. <laughs> it is super light. But I liked it. It's got a very zen feel to it. It's just, it's relaxing. The art's beautiful. You're just taking cards. You have a community garden and you have your garden and you're doing set collection. But it's probably the most relaxing set collection game I've ever played. I don't know. There's, they did a really good job with it. The design and everything. It's just a very peaceful laid back game. Yeah, so the reason I like this game is it's a sort of a the cat just meowed at us he did it's a sort of a uh, Prussia luck kind of game so I don't know if you've ever played you may have played archaeology the card game it's one of those oh. games where you're collecting cards and at some point well you're not collecting cards in this game they're kind of on the table but at some point you have to decide okay I'm gonna turn in my set so you, there's a community yeah. group of cards and you have a kind of your own group of cards that only you can use. So you basically pull from the community cards and your cards to create a set of, of cards. Smokey's uh, um, making rare appearance. And uh, <laughs> the, long, the more cards you get in that set, the more points it's worth. But waiting too long is dangerous because one of your opponents could grab the cards you want and put it into one of their sets. So it's got a press your luck kind of feel to it, and so I enjoyed that part. Tell everybody hello. The cat's going to freak. Yes, he is. <laughs> so Herbaceous, yeah, just a nice little card game. Let's see what it says here. One to four players, plays in 20 minutes. And Nessa played this, plays this game just fine. So Yep, it's great. Um, Brent asked if we like Herbaceous or Lotus better. What do you like better? What do I like better? I like the Herbaceous better. I like it too. I think Nessa, however, would disagree with us and likes Lotus better. Lotus, Lotus is slightly it's, more straightforward than this game. And it's got flowers and bugs and which has butterflies and, and butterflies and, and, and stuff like that. is all about those right now so there's you know whichever i think this is a bit. better overall game i think the other games more uh has more table appeal i think yeah oh yeah it's gorgeous this is a little more laid back art but yes all right what's next very cool all right next up who likes latin i do who likes rosenberg we do who likes Ora and lavora <laughs> It's awesome. I love this game. Oh my goodness. Hmm. I almost want to have like a Rosenberg marathon now to rank his games because I have a feeling this is going to be really, really high up on the list. I really liked playing this a lot. Yeah, I would put this up there with 
my favorites of his. Yeah, um, um, really cool game. I'm glad I'm glad I got this game. It's been on the shelf of shame for a long time. Really long time. So basically, what ha- what happened was, um, I guess it was I don't know how long ago. It was about maybe six eight months ago. Yeah, it uh, was that long. ago. I was wanting to get my cow, and so I went on to Board Game Geek, and. Um, Found someone trade is selling Macau right at second hand obviously, Macau. and the same person was selling this game. So I got a two for deal on on getting both games. I got this for a really good price. It's out of print now. You can't get it. And uh, this may challenge for my favorite Rosenberg game. That's how much mm-hmm. I like it. It's really really fun. Um, it has a cool kind of rondel mechanism. Basically, it's it's yeah. basically an econ. It builds an economy of a game. So. Each turn, resources become more and more valuable, um, and you, you get more and more of the resource, is what I meant to say. More and more of, this, of the resource, but once you take that resource, it goes down to the minimum number when you do that. So, it's it, it, again, it's got that pressure luck feel because, like, okay, do I want to take the wood now and get seven, but I can wait next turn and get eight? Yeah. Or I can wait the turn after that and get nine. And uh, <laughs> But at any point, she could grab it, and now I'm only going to get one. So, it's, yep, it's, yep. it's really cool. Got a cool, you know supply and demand kind of economy so it's yeah. really, really cool it is i really like that i didn't think i thought oh it's gonna be really similar to a lot of his others no this one's really different and i don't know why we waited so darn long to play this i guess we thought it was gonna be super long I, we kept hearing it was really long and we're like oh a really long head it was pretty long i mean it's it's long it's a two-hour game but not i don't know we it just felt like it was lighter than I expected it to be. I expected it to be kind of a drag for some reason. I, th- I expected it to drag out, if that makes any sense. No, it, but I it really has, enjoyed it. But it has the engaging, like, Rosenberg ramp up car- slowly thing that he magically seems to do in all of his games. Right. And it's just, it's really cool. So, so yeah, work and pray. Yeah, so it's so per- it's a pretty straightforward game. You're just gathering resources and you use those resources to make buildings. And you put your buildings on your tableau. And a lot of the buildings have bonuses based on where they are in relation to other buildings. Mm -hmm. And um, you can expand your tableau. Basically, you start out with a small area and you can buy board additions like in a lot of his games. And you can keep building more and more buildings. And some are on the coast, can only be built on the coast. Some can only be built on water. And so you have to buy different areas uh, to expand out to. It's got a little bit of the the feel of um, Lahav, too. About the building up the right resources to make sure you have food and right. of, of those right. resources. I really liked that. And, of course, too, some of the, the symbols that he uses are similar to the ones in that game. And some of the pieces, you'll look, you know, you'll recognize them from other Rosenberg games. It's kind of neat to see those. But he uses them in different ways. I really like it. Yeah, but this so. one doesn't really feel like any of his other games. No, it doesn't. It still has that ramp up feel though. Well, yeah, but it doesn't feel like but, um, any of his other games I've played. Yeah, it's different, and I think that's one of the reasons I think it's going to be one of my top games of his. It's just, it's just that, it is. It's very different. Okay. So hopefully they will bring this back out so everyone can play that game because it's pretty darn good. All right, you want me? To, I'll just I'll just work from left to right. You guys can't see off camera anyway. Ah, I don't know if I can reach this. Okay. Holy cow! I forgot you have all the expand. More expansions in here. Roar player! Okay, this was awesome. I enjoyed this a lot. We got the expansion, which is now where you actually take your person and fight monsters and things with it. And I I enjoyed having that extra depth to the game because now it's like a two-parter, right? You First you build up your dude, if you want to do it that way, and make it a two-parter. And... Work on the, the role player that you're used to playing, the base game and stuff. Um, and then you kind of have some tweaks and stuff with it. And you also have some new dice. You wanna yeah, there's new... Like there, the... In addition to the, all the normal <laughs> dice, if you played this game, they mm-hmm. have... Uh, I can't even what the, what they're called. They're called uh, super dice. <laughs> I don't know, but it, they, the, they number from, I want to say, 3 to 8 instead of 1 to 6. And so that, that helps you get the higher stats. There's a bunch of new classes and a bunch of new characters but the main thing is like she said the monsters and basically there's two types of monsters that you're fighting you're, there's a main monster that you're trying to fight you'll fight at the very very end of the game basically yeah. you'll take your character and go fight that monster and what's cool is throughout the game you can learn information about how what how to fight that monster and 
as you fight some of his minions, you gain knowledge on you know what what kind of dice you might need and things like that to be to be able to fight him more effectively. And then during the game, throughout the game, there's little minions you can fight, and if you fight them, you can get XP and and things like that. And the XP can be used for all sorts of different things. So it's just a cool, it just kind of add more meat to the game. Yep. But I noticed, and this this is from one play. I noticed I really focused in on the expansion and did all the expansion stuff almost to the detriment of the rest of it. And I got my lowest score I've ever gotten. So you got to do a balanced, kind of a balanced thing. You got to got to focus on your building your character right, and you got to do the, the fighting the monsters yes. as well. So I kind of yes, grasshopper, you must find. Balance. So I, I I got a really low score, and for whatever reason, I did all the the fighting. The, I fought minions all through the thing, and then I wasn't really prepared to fight the big monster at the end. And my character, which wasn't, is funny because you had done all the cards and yeah. cheated and looked at well cheated well but looked you didn't cheat but looked at all the cards yeah but you had you ended up with a ton of money left over and i was spending my money throughout the game so you used that money to roll extra dice i knew i was gonna need help but anyway <laughs> love the love like, the expansion it's cool. if you like role player i highly highly recommend the expansion when, yes when it comes out if you didn't kickstart it yep yep um we'll see Ooh, brent's saying there's a lorenzo wheel magnifico it's already on my wish list <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing okay yeah. very cool very cool um, herbaceous dice. Hmm. hmm. No clue. Maybe. No clue about that one. Never heard I'm a it. terrible dice roller, but I might be intrigued because everybody loves that game so much. They probably like it. playing it. So, cool. Um, we'll see. I thought I saw something else, but maybe I didn't. No, they're talking about... Role player. Cow. And, yeah, cows. And my cow. I don't know what's going on over there. It's crazy. <laughs> Alright, well, let's move on to Vikings. Dun, 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 dun. This was the weekend that I got to play this for the first time. Hunter's already been playing this and loving this game. And finally he's like, you're going to sit down and play this. And this is fun. I was like, oh, okay, another Viking game, whatever. I was kind of like not super excited about it, except that he was really excited about it. So I'm like, okay. The worker placement mechanism in this is so much fun. And it's different from the, your typical worker placement game because you're doing two moves. So you're going to put a worker down, but then you're going to pick one up from a different location. So you're doing two moves. And that's going to be pretty strategic too because you're picking one up, which means, first of all, there has to be something there at a place you want something to happen. And, or maybe or maybe not. You don't have to do the action that's there. But you also may be opening up. There's three different kinds of meeples in this that can do different things depending on what color they are. So we might want to pick up. There's a stray white meeple over here that needs picked up. Or maybe there's a gray one and you really need to do some gray actions. It drives it more than I thought it would. I really enjoyed the fact that you're not just playing and doing an action. Playing and doing an action. There was a lot more going on with that. Really fun twist to your typical worker placement game. So Tommy asked if I've, what other games I've played. This is it. It's the only one I've played. I'm looking into the expansions because I heard it makes the game even better. So Ooh. this game, for me, borders on too light. Um, I enjoy it quite a bit. It's really good. But I think I want a little more going on. So I'm going to look into the expansions. Mm -hmm. I, I heard they, they help the game quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So it's the only one I've played. That's cool. And then, is this the... This Someone one. was talking about art and I wasn't sure if it was this... One is it herbaceous? I see, don't know. Let me see herbaceous. Let me see the. The somebody was talking about the art, and I was like, all of these are pretty cool. The art on this this stuff is pretty crazy good. I'm trying to see where the artist. No clue. Doesn't say. I don't know. Oh, Beth Sobel. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. There you go. There's your art. Yep. And then this one too. They're all good. 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 Awesome stuff. Very fun. So. Yeah, so <laughs> they, they, they heard us. All right. Onward. Moving Onward. We on. got a lot to get through. We, oh. we played a lot of new games this month. We did, guys. We've oh. already talked about this one. We kind of want to do I want to do a full recap of what we thought. <laughs> this game is awesome. We are definitely buying a recharge pack and doing this game again. Maybe with the girls or something. We've got to figure that out yet. But awesome, 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 awesome. I think... Now, we haven't played Pandemic Legacy 2 yet, I know, but it's going to be hard-pressed to beat this as my favorite Legacy game. I am I think this is my favorite Legacy game. Not me. I like Pandemic better than this one. I really yeah. I really enjoyed this game a lot. It was really, really fun. Um, 
There's a few few little surprises along the way, which I thought were really cool. But um, bottom line is a really straightforward cube pushing worker placement game. Oh yeah. At, at its at its core, it's a very light cube pushing worker placement game. Now, towards the end of the game, it, it started picking up, and it, it, it's unlike a lot of legacy games, you gain more and more rules and more and more things going on as you went on. By the end, it was the kind of game I like. But the first half of the game, it was it was a really light, very straightforward worker placement game. Mm-hmm. So, but I like the two things I like about it. One is that um, when you're done, you actually have a playable game that you can play over and over again. We can yeah. pull this out right now and play a, a standard worker placement game. And with it's this, cool. With it's all, a with fun all, game. With all the all the bells and whistles that we gained yeah. along the way, and two, like she said, the board is double sided, so you can flip over the board. And do it a whole buy game. a recharge pack and play the entire campaign again, and end up with a completely different game, which than than the before. other side. So then once you do that, once you play through it again, you can choose which side you want to play, and it's a completely different game. Well, not completely different, but somewhat quite different a bit game. Different. The the all the the buildings and yeah. things you're going to have access to are going to be different and things like that. I I love it, and I what I think is really neat about this is going through, and if we were to play it again. Knowing what's going to happen in general doesn't affect it like it would with Pandemic Legacy. Like, that ruins it. With this, it's like, <laughs> you know what? I want to try doing this and see right, what happens right. instead. It The way that they did the plot twists and stuff is such that it's not a game changer knowing what happens. It's more of like, what's it going to do differently? And I think that's why I enjoy it. I feel like the replayability for this one is high on top of it being a legacy game, which I don't know how they pulled that off. Because quite frankly, those don't really seem like two things that should go together, honestly. I mean, so I think that's why it edges ahead of Pandemic Legacy for me. Because I can still play this. When we play this again, <laughs> um, I do not want to play it with just us. Yeah, I want more players. I want more players. I think I, I think it. it'll make the game more interesting. It was mm-hmm. it was great to play. It is. It's really but fun. I think it would be more interesting with more players, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yep. I don't really want to say why, because I feel like I'd kind of ruin things. Not ruin but... things. Next. <laughs> oh my goodness. This game. This game. Bye, Captain Sonar. You're great and all, but this game rocks. Oh my goodness. This, yeah. Wins. Hands down. Awesome. Amazing. So I think... I like Captain Sonar better than this one. But, what? Yes, you heard me. But, mm. but mm. this is a really good two or four player, or even three player, two to four player implementation of this game. I think this game would be light years ahead of Captain Sonar when you play two to four players. So if I have, if, if, but if I if I had the choice and was able to get the people oh, well, for both, yeah, okay. I would definitely play Captain Sonar. Over this I can one. see that. But anyway, this is a uh, yeah. If you don't know, this it. is the two to four player version of Captain Sonar. It's not well it's not real time. It's turn based. But it is well done. And it is super easy to learn. Super easy to play. Um, but so not so easy Cap- to master. Captain Sonar <laughs> to do Captain Sonar properly if you want to teach it, unlike how we got taught. Um, each role, you have to go, this is what you do, here's the complete rules, how you play your role. Okay, next person, this is how you play this role, there's all your rules. And you have to do that for four different positions, yeah. right? And then if you want to swap, then you have another reteach of, of how the rules work for each person. Yeah. This one, I could teach you to play this game in probably less than five minutes. And it's we're ready to super, roll. super simple to learn. It's uh, uh, Target only. You can only get this at Target. It's a Target, one of those Target exclusive, exclusive games. Um, but if you're looking for the Captain Sonar experience and you don't have to find eight people to play, this is the one you get. Oh my gosh, yeah. I am totally loving it. And you're right. If we had the eight people, Captain Sonar still really does win because it's amazing eight player experience. You lose that crazy chaos tension thing, right? But the tension is still really high in this. It's a different kind of tension. Yeah, right? that's true. The other that's one's true. a tension of, of the anxiety of going quickly and doing like, what you need to do, right? Like sub tension. Like watching Hunt for the Red October tension because you're like, okay, 
It's happening. It's all like secret, quiet. Everyone's moving, wondering who's gonna make the noise first that the other person hears. Kind of the I, I don't know. It was it was really fun. I really enjoyed this one a lot. So give this one a, a try. Very very good. So onward. Onward. Yeah, we have a lot of games to go. We, we played did. a lot of new this games is, recently. This is exciting. So I finally got the chance to play Legend of the Five Rings with Caitlin. Um, she's been playing it, and she was like, I want to, you know, play it with you and stuff. Because I used to play it when it was a CCG, oh, geez, um, around the year 2000, long time ago. Um, had a blast with it. I played Scorpion and Crane, and I think I even had a Dragon deck for a while. Um, and so it's, I, I was intrigued when they first came out with it, because I was like, okay, this is more my kind of shtick anyway, because with an LCG... You can eventually get all the stuff without having to do all the trading and all the spending thousands of dollars and stuff on it. So I'm much more on board with this. They changed up some things. It's going to take me a little while to get used to because I really liked the old system a lot. But I must say they kept the heart of it the same and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, I've only gotten a couple plays in. It's it's just little nuances that are different. I, they still kept the same world and they've got the like rich character base and the storyline. And in fact, in each package that you buy, they have like some stories of some of the main players in the clans and stuff doing political intrigues and stuff. It's pretty interesting if you follow that world. So pretty fun. All in all, I really enjoy it. I'm looking forward to getting some more cards so that Katie and I can build up our decks a little bit. The beginner decks, I'm used to playing with everything. So getting the little tiny wimpy beginner decks, I was like, Mm, no, I'm ready to move on to the bigger ones now. So, but it's really fun. It's a beautiful game. The art, as always, always a winner. They did an awesome job again with the art. It's gorgeous. So, very fun LCG. Legend of the Five Rings. Love it. You need my summary? You haven't played it. I'll never play it. <laughs> I, I have no interest in LCG, CCG. I know you. You magicked stuff. yourself out. I'm like, done. Yeah, he's done. No, I, no interest. I, I love them, and this one I've always I've always liked the storyline and stuff like this. Really Someone really asked cool. earlier, Brett, Brett, Brett Brandon? asked Brett asked earlier if the maps are exchangeable between Sonar and Captain Sonar. I would mm. almost say yes, but the only thing that I think might be an issue is the the. The right side of the board has keeps track of all the stuff that's going on. I can't oh. recall if there's something in the uh, in Captain Sonar on the maps that's on the right side that's needed. Yeah, that's the only that's issue I think because uh, I, it may uh, it may be Captain Sonar maps are just a map. I can't remember, and if mm -hmm. that's the case, then it's totally interchangeable. Yeah. Um, the right side for the Sonar game, the right side of the map. There's two copies of the map. Well, obviously, one for the captain and one for the navigator. Or you can play it by yourself and do both roles. But um, it has all keeps track of how many, uh, how much power you have. Because basically, the game works as you build up. The more you move, you build up kind of power, and you use those to power your abilities. And, and mm -hmm. Captain Sonar is completely different. So I can't recall if the map in Captain Sonar is just a map, then they're interchangeable. Yeah. Um, I used to a long time ago. For a while, I wasn't playing very many board games, but I played a lot of CCGs. I played um, L5R, and I played um, Star Trek, and Wheel of Time, which one kind of was a flash in the pan, but I had a blast with that game. What was the other one? I played, was it Netrunner or something? Um, there, were, there were a bunch of CCGs out around 2000 and stuff. I didn't really get into Magic, which is odd enough. I don't know why. I kind of like this It was this probably... Before already no it was still popular was it was still it? popular i just didn't hang out with that crowd i guess so. i played magic when it first came out for about a year or two and then i was done really wow you had a lot of cards for just a year or two you went into it pretty hardcore huh i may have <laughs> you had quite the i collection. didn't go crazy hardcore i didn't like collect moxes and all the oh weird, well no weird crap, but, but yeah yes there's a squeaking noise lady has decided to sit right underneath the mic with her toy i apologize I can't quite reach her. I'm about to tackle that dog. <laughs> I'm squeaking in my old age. <laughs> yeah, squeak. My, my joints <laughs> squeak. All right, one last one, and we're done with new stuff. Quit it, lady. <laughs> she starts going at it worse. Okay. You know what I say? Venus next. <laughs> and then the world. No, this right here. A little board of greatness. Venus next goes with the beast of a game. 
that I will rant and rave about forever because I love it, and that's Terraforming Mars. Actually, we both love this game a lot, as you well know. Lady, stop. Oh, my goodness. Lady <laughs> squeak, loves squeak, it, too. Squeak, She's squeak. giving squeaks of approval. Can you take it and throw it or something? I, I will try. <laughs> Hold that thought. Oh, you're going to run off with it. Are you give me that. Okay, get out of here. There you go. She'll be back in 10 seconds. But you get 10 seconds of peace. 10 seconds of peace. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway, Venus next adds to the game. I know you're surprised by this. Adds a cute little board. And that's it. No, I'm just kidding. There's more to it. You have more places to um, put cities down, of course. And you'll have another bar to keep track of that will help you get some more terraforming points or victory points. Then it also threw in a whole bunch of different cards that I think I really like the dynamic that it added to it. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I really enjoyed the Venus cards. If you played the Terraforming cool. Mars, there's several different categories of cards. Can you put it on the table? She's got to suffer for a little bit. <laughs> no, give me that. Give me that. So, if you play Terraforming Mars, there's like the Jovian cards, the Earth cards, some other cards, and different brands of cards. There's Venus. It adds a whole new category called you know, Venus cards, and it adds a new uh, thing. Like you have the algae and the animals and things like that. It adds <laughs> floaters. So apparently, there's <laughs> floating things in the Venus that you use. So they can't really do the planet because it's too inhospitable. So they have like dirigibles, dirigibles, dirigibles. Anyway, floating around. So you 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 harvest floaters and you use the floaters for just like you do with the algae. It triggers things. You can get victory points or special powers by spending those. So you basically build up a, a battery of those, I guess, using yeah. a magic term. It's just the and, terms and, that they... And you can use those to do other things. So it just, it really added a lot. I really enjoyed it. I don't think I'll play without it now that we've played with it, except maybe with the new players. But even then, I'd probably still teach them how it works. I just don't like the term floaters. Why couldn't they call them the hovering infrastructure? The because floaters. Anyway, we all float down here. Is that how the saying goes? I've never seen that movie. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <sighs> that how it works? How we all float down here? Something like that. Anyway, awesome addition. Yeah, no, it's really good. Really, really, really good. Like you said, I don't want to play without them ever again. Nope. It's not. It's part of the game. They're shuffled into our deck and they're probably going to stay there. So. <laughs> I don't want to the sort them out. No I don't want to sort them out anyway. So. Yeah. It adds new Venus corporations as well. Lots of new things. So. Oh, yeah. It's this is, this is the good. first real, what I'd call a real expansion for the game. The other one was just map. The map. So. The dog looked around confusedly for the last minute and now she's begging me by trying to lick my feet to get her toy back. <laughs> All right, that is it. We made it through all our new games. It only took new us games. almost thirty minutes. Hey, whatever. We've had some good, some good questions and interactions and talking about these games. And yeah, all right, so super fun, we, guys. we have some super new questions. Fun. Yes, let's see. Just bought Halos and Elysium, so it's a new map. Um, that's what all the Halos and Elysium oh, yeah. really does for you. Yeah, it, was it has a new map and it has new uh, milestones and awards down at the bottom that you can gain for that. But we do have a question: Do we keep the expansions and the base? Do you keep the expansion in the base box or keep them in original boxes? I'll, if it'll fit in the base box, the expansion box is gone. There's, I don't know if I have... There's very few games. One. We have one, I thought, that has two boxes right now. There's only think... one. I always get rid of the expansion well, box. Well, show them, show them our terraforming Mars boards. <laughs> we, we, we can't quite fit the boards in here. So we have everything but the two big boards now. Yeah. So they, they sit out. I thought we had... One game that had an expansion. Oh, um, Scoundrels of Skullport and Lords of Waterdeep. I've still two I've boxes. Eyed yeah, you, I thought. I just don't want to do get that. rid of the insert. I, I, I the insert's think cool. That may be the only expansion we own. I think the box so. Because sometimes, like Splendor, yeah. we liked the so art, that answered and question. so we put the all the entire game in the expansion box. But yeah, we usually combine them. That, that may I be can't... Lords of Waterdeep. Maybe the only one, I and think I could it get is. rid of the Skullport we box. Could, but the, they actually had a really the insert's good kind of insert. nice yeah -ish, so yeah everything else it's just easier guys it's so much easier especially when you start getting an insane collection or you're or you're just short on space and if it's an expansion you like i don't know i would recommend combining it just to save on space in general but so i would say jobby but it's jobby right jobby jobby jo yeah jo i always say jobby anyway <laughs> Asked, 
how many expansions before they should create a big box version of the game or, or give you a, bo- a collector's box to put in it? I think they should just plan ahead because they already have this stuff in the works. It drives me crazy. They there, should just, there should already be there one for Terraforming Mars. be one. Yeah. I honestly think these I, games I, honestly, that I don't, know... I don't mind spending 10, 20 bucks to get a really nice box that holds all the expansions Everything, for the yeah. game. Yeah, once you get past what will fit in the base box, you should offer a bigger box. I think so. That's my opinion. I think most of those turkeys know that it's coming in advance. But a lot of games don't. I don't know if there's it. like an Arkham Horror has like 10 million expansions. I don't think there's a big box Arkham Horror. Mm, that's true. I don't know. It's very... But they have like a Dominion, like that briefcase or whatever. Yeah, but that's not, an have... that's not official from the company. But they should. They should. They should. Yeah, once... once. I don't know why they don't actually. That'd be good money. You'd think that would be a... Just make a bet box and put a few little kind of promo type expansion inside with the box. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what they did with the big geeky box for oh, Smash, yeah, Smash Up. Up. They put like a one set of cards with it and you mm-hmm. buy it and that's all it is. Yes. A box and car- one set of cards. There you go. See? That should be the plan. Now now, you, now you make me want... Now I'm wanting to combine my Lords of Waterdeep. <laughs> Since that's the only one. No, it's our outlier. It's no! Special. It's special. Combine! Leave it alone! No! I can fit another game right there. Back off. <laughs> Back Alright, that's our scandals. new games. New games. Woo! New games. Our shelf of shame's getting empty. It's almost time to get a... No, a you calm down, Hoss. We're new, finally down. A new down game to... order. <laughs> We're down to how many games we got on our shelf of shame? No! One, what? two, three, four, four, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen games 13, left. Lucky thirteen. Thirteen games on the shelf of shame. Time to fill it back up. No, that's not full. <laughs> that's not full. First world problems right there. And I've played some of those games already. See? Dirty Cheater. Actually, we have. We just haven't played our copy. Yeah. All right. Banned Words. Have you guys played that? I want to play this game. We're going to play it this I can't weekend. wait to play. Speaking of this weekend, this weekend is International Tabletop Day. Is it really? I didn't realize that. Is and, this weekend? And we happen to have a game day going on there. So we're going to do... Tabletopping. We're going to be doing... Uh, we're gonna do, Finger I'm gonna, exercises. This is pictures. This is the universal sign for pictures. Even though now picture is more like... Like pushing a button. No, it's more like this is a. You gotta do that. You gotta do the duck lips or whatever they call that, right? <laughs> so, well, we we won't be doing anything live or anything this weekend, but I'm gonna be trying to do lots of Instagramness. So, oh dear. So go out if you haven't joined our Instagram. Go out to the His family Instagram. showdown. The family. No, showdown. no, it's just family underscore showdown. Instagram. Family underscore family <laughs> underscore showdown on Instagram, and we'll be I'll be posting pictures throughout the day of our Very game cool. day. So Very cool. The g- game plan for the game day is do lots of kind of lighter social deduction group type games. So fun, banned words, banned words. Because the next three game days are already planned out. Dun 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 dun. dun. So this is the last free form game day, I guess. Free form is that the right word? I don't know. Cat lady, here we go. Freelance, free form. Freelance, free flowing. I don't know. Did we back Fireball Island? Did we? Did we back I can on? confirm nor deny that answer. Interesting. So when we get a mysterious package in the unknown future that I don't know anything about, what are you putting? Note don't, to self, don't kill. Look. You gotta look away. Look away. There's the Fireball Island answer. <laughs> All right, you can look back. That's no, fine. I can't because it'll be on the screen 30 seconds later. No, it was only a five seconds delay. Oh, is it gone now? Nope. Now it's gone. Go ahead. I gave you the follow-up Fireball Island answer. It's cryptic, so she won't know. It's cryptic. I'm still deciding. Liar. <laughs> liar. <laughs> liar. Oh, you man. fooled no one. No one. Okay. All right, so that's it. Tabletop day this weekend. Watch us on Instagram. I'll be tweeting it, too, as well. So. Like a bird. <laughs> Next, we're going to keep... Play, harp playing this fiddle? That, that word? I don't know. I don't know what you're BG, going for. BGG Spring. Oh. We are we are having a meetup. The plan, the things are to be determined, but the, the plan is Saturday afternoon. Okay. We're thinking two to four. Yay! I may have to bug out a little bit earlier because I've got to go to the virtual flea market or whatever it's called mm-hmm. to sell some games. Cool. But two to four, and we're gonna, I'm going to try to reserve one of the ballrooms, and we'll get together in the ballroom. We'll have refurbishments, 
Refurbishments. <laughs> Refurbishments, and we'll chat and talk and hang take, out. We and have take, to take a group of Take pictures group picture. and all that good stuff. Yes. That'll be so much fun. I can't So, wait. two to four is the plan. But, I'll, like I said, we'll tweet in other videos. We'll tweet it out, and we'll put it on our Facebook group, and we'll say it in our, on our, our channel as well. And with then, the exact details. Yes. Are. And I... I'm going to go ahead and say that at 2 o'clock, as close to 2 o'clock, once we're pretty sure we've got everybody at, that we can, I'd love to do the group picture right away in case people have to come or go or leave or whatever, too. So if you can show up at least at the beginning for a little bit, that'd be really awesome. I'm going to try, <laughs> I'm going to, try to get a actual we'll board, take boardroom. Pictures. Did I say ballroom? Boardroom. A ballroom? That's a bit nuts. But, I'm okay. going to try to reserve a boardroom. Okay. During that time, I'm I'm trying the it's like in limbo reserving boardrooms right now. But as soon as I can, I want to try to reserve one. It'd be cool to have our own little space and hang out and chat. Heck yeah, let's have a ballroom. We'll just turn it into like a whole, a, whole ballroom. Yeah, we'll just bring our <laughs> one of those side ballrooms. Yeah, we, use. we yeah. can like roller derby or something in there. I don't know. I think I said ballroom. You I did board room. We'll dance. Board. We'll dance the room. the the day away. <laughs> We can do that too. Whatever. All right. So that's BGG Spring. Look for details probably in the next week or so. Yep, but aim for that time. Saturday. That'll be awesome. All right. Now it's time for a Rebecca's Random Review. What? It's really random. I wasn't prepared for that, <laughs> which is the best part. It's KK. Hi, KK. <laughs> All right. So, um, random review, A. Eh? All right. Pick a number between... Pick a number it. between 1 and 45. Number between 1 and 45. 1 and 45. Pick a number between 1 and 45. What just happened? 33! Came up twice. Interesting. All right, hold on. I gotta do math. I know, terrifying thought. I don't still know what your system is. It's very random. Yeah, it is because I change it every time. <laughs> forty-two. Right. Someone said forty-two. Well, that's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. I think. Did we already do that? Which one? I have a list somewhere. Yeah, we already did that one. That's what I thought. We did that one. Yeah, I have a list. You've kept a list. Look at you. Nope, we haven't done it, but we have talked about it recently. Okay, so, well, so uh, don't do that one. I, but the people have chosen. Nope. All right, what's the next one? Forty-four. Okay. Ah, we have not done this. Which one? Oh, you're kind of in the way. You'll never know. Oh. Yeah, we have not done that one. Greetings today for your random review. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about a choir. Now, there are many versions of this game. Hunter has acquired the coolest acquired. Why? Because it's got the cute little 3D buildings. You've got those other ones out there that are the same game, hopefully less dusty, but that have um, just like chits or they're flat pieces or they lack color or all of the above this one makes this one stand out a little bit better because you actually have pieces and they're hard plastic and i don't know it adds to the appeal but this is one of those what would you call this kind of an economic um area control strategy game it's very abstract you're making it you're making it sound much deeper than it is it's very abstract it's very abstract but you're basically just building buildings and as you touch onto certain areas you kind of acquire the whole thing it's like the borg they just take over everybody yeah the larger one and absorbs the smaller one yeah so you just companies are going in and eating other companies it's kind of like a little too close to real life right yep but the cool thing is that you get to be the one that's doing that and making the money in the process so uh, i was surprised actually that how much i liked this game because the area control, sometimes I'm kind of eh on. I like abstract games. That doesn't bother me. But, like, the whole area control and economic thing I'm kind of met about. This one's not too bad. I was surprisingly, like, 
pleased by this game. And I think the Avalon Hill, I think it's Avalon Hill. Mm -hmm. Avalon Hill version is by far the best. Let me show you some pieces here. I think I'm covered in dust now. Because we didn't dust. But the board and stuff, see, this reminds me, I don't know if you've ever played like Upwards or any of those. They have the plastic little squares. They're pretty cool. They're really sturdy. And then the little buildings when you take over a large enough area. I love these. I, they're all unique. And they have their own color and stuff that don't mean a whole lot, but it's kind of fun. And that's that's basically the game. You're just trying to take over its area control to stock. Well, you to stock your stock. stock. Yeah, you get stock. It's, you can buy stock. You get stock when your company gets absorbed and things like that. Yeah, but basically it's area control with stocks. <laughs> sounds very weird. It is. It's very abstract. It sounds very dry, but if you enjoy um, abstract games, it's a pretty good abstract game. I. But it's it, 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 it's also pretty straightforward, and you just mm -hmm. you have it. It reminds me a little bit of Scrabble in a way. It's weird. You have tiles, yeah. and you get to pick mm -hmm. the one you want to play. Mm -hmm. um, it, it basically there's a grid, and you put the tile where the, where it is on the grid, and. Um, you either form a new company if, it, if possible, and once it gets to a certain size, you can form a new company. And then the smaller companies, when it touches a larger company, it gets absorbed. And then the small company, all the stock, you can turn all your stock in for cash, or you can get stock in the new company, and um, you get more money based on who ha who has the most shares of each stock. So yep, and cool there game. there you have it. It says for complexity level moderate. <laughs> Moderate. That's what it says. It has advanced, challenging, and moderate is colored in. <laughs> but no, I. if you're going to play this game, I would recommend the Avalon Hill version. If you can find it. I mean, it's kind of hard to find it any of these. out of print. But it, oh yeah, this is old, as you can tell by looking at it. But it's just, I don't know, there's something extra... You know, you got the tangible thing going on. I got on a really it, good so. price on this. So I, I yeah, got lucky. You can find them. You can wheel and deal. Keep an eye on eBay. He, and they'll, they'll pop up. Someone, that, right. someone who doesn't know better will sell them for, for a decent price if you catch them. Yeah, that's the thing. You just keep your eyes out for those people. Or uh, the random yard sales and things like yeah. that where people just don't know what they have. And they're like, here, that's the version. Quarter. I originally <laughs> played that game in 1999, and that was the version I played. So, I'm old. Yes, I am old. <laughs> I am old. Old. Old, old. All right, that's, we're almost, we're almost. There you go. We're random. Wreck, wreck random, random review. Of you. All right. We haven't done this in a while. That's so exciting. It's time for, you don't have any paper. <gasps> Uh-oh. It's time I for a, back. a five on the spot. Oh, yes. <laughs> so give us a top five list to do, and we'll do a top five. Yeah, it could be anything. Doesn't necessarily have to be board game related. That's true. But. Give us a five on the spot, a top five list. Five on the spot. Five on the spot. All right. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Top five Hasbro games? What? Top five Hasbro games. I don't know. I just saw Does Hasbro. Does that include uh, Parker Brothers? Oh, if that's the case, that'd be rough. I love Parker Brothers. They were a good company. Very sad. Sad to see them. No, 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 no suggestions. Crickets? Yet. Top five states. <laughs> state of top sleeping, state, state of state of confusion, confusion. <laughs> state of exhaustion. Top five states. Mm. Do we want to do that one? We can do that. That's pretty good. Top five deck builders. Probably get. Oh, people are chatting about that. I like the top five states. You have to say why though. I know what your first one is, nerd. <laughs> top five states. I haven't been to. I haven't, you I haven't been to five I, states. No, I haven't been to. I've been to about, I haven't been to a lot of the cool states. All right, top five states. We'll do that one. Maybe we may do a. We'll do, give us a board game related one. We'll do one too. You'll get the two for tonight. Ooh, a two for. Mm. Don't look at my answers. I'm not looking at your stupid answers. Oh wow. I think the dog is in eating the cat's food. Like there's no tomorrow. That's what I would do. What is it with you pets tonight? How did you even get in there to reach that? What is wrong with you? We feed you. We feed you. Oh my gosh, have you no...
no shame. Dog. All right. I got my list. Oh, we feed you. <sighs> Top five times I got schooled in board games by Rebecca. <laughs> He, he blocks those out of lost his memory. Cities, lost Cities, Lost Cities, Lost Cities. Oh, whatever. More than one game. I don't know if you ever schooled me. You schooled Aww. me? You schooled me one other day in one game. I remember what game was it you destroyed me in? All of them. Well, you just destroyed me in... Uh, <laughs> um, what did we just play? <laughs> Terraforming oh, Mars. Oh, Role Player. No, you destroyed me in Terraforming Mars. Right. Oh, Role Player. Yeah, I annihilated you in that. That was great. Uh, there's another you game. destroyed me in Terraforming was it, Mars, though. No, or at Le Labora, I beat you. What, well, not... so what game did we play recently that you beat um... me in? It was really bad. I mean, you just really, you like, almost doubled my score. Can't oh. remember what it is now. How could I forget something? All right, ready like for that. your top five states? Um, uh, yes, but I'm probably going to get crap for my, I, okay. I'm going to have to reveal my massive nerdum. Nerddom. Okay, nerddom. Bring it. My massive nerddom. What's your number to five? To qualify my list. Okay. All right. So back in the day, oh, when I was a younger lad, I used to LARP. Do you know what LARPing is? Live action role play. <laughs> it's where, Nerd! Where, it's where you go out in the woods and beat each other with plumbing supplies. In costume, no less. So, my number five. <laughs> plumbing supplies. You make one, of these, one of these little, little things, LARPy things I went on. Was in Michigan, right off Ooh. Ooh. one of the Great Lakes. I'm not sure which one. Mm. The one that's north west of Detroit. I don't know which one that is. It was right on the Great Lakes, and it was it was the in the it was October. The leaves oh. were turning. The lake was amazing, and at night the fog would roll off the lake. It was just gorgeous. I would not. I can't vouch for the rest of Michigan. I can only vouch for the small piece that I saw. Well, that's... And it, was, and it was beautiful. So my number five is Michigan. All right. Now I know. My, now they know what lake that was. Oh dear. All right, my number five. You're gonna laugh. I'm. I'm pretty much sealed it in, but I'm going to solidify this number this June. Because I haven't actually been there yet. But I have been in love with Alaska forever and have been wanting to go forever. It has everything that I enjoy, it, like one nice little happy bundle. And I cannot wait to go see this place. I'm positive I'm going to fall in love with it, and that's my number five. What was your number five? Alaska. Oh, Alaska. You can't vote for something you haven't even seen. I can, because I love that place. So, back to my number five. It was Lake Huron. 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 There you go. And Saginaw Bay, if you're from that area. So oh. that's where it was. That's where we did the thing. Um, Beautiful. So, anyway. I've heard nothing but My number about four. Michigan. Number four is Colorado. Ooh, good pick. So we went there in the winter time. I've been to Colorado many times, but the most recent trip, we went, we went, I went with her. And we went during the winter time, and it was like icicles hanging off oh, the yeah, side the of the road. Oh yeah, the frozen waterfall. And it was just it was Forgot about that. beautiful. We drove up to uh, Estes Park. We saw elk everywhere. It was gorgeous. I've been there in my LARPy days many many times, and we were up in the mountains, not high up in the mountains, but up in the mountains. It was you're pretty high up, and if you're up it's in Estes, beautiful area. Love. I'm I'm an outdoorsy person at heart. I wish I could do it more, but my number four, Colorado. Lovely, lovely. My number four, I haven't been there in a very long time, but the few times I've been there, I fell in love with the two, and that's Montana. Um, you'll probably guess I like mountains a lot. You'll probably see a theme with my states. Um, but I like having four distinct seasons, and they call Montana the big sky state, and it really feels like that. I mean, it's just, oh, the, you know, the skyline's huge out there. It's gorgeous. I love it. I love the scenery. I love the atmosphere. That's just... What was it? Montana. Eh, it's all right. <laughs> Have you been to Montana? Have yes. you even been? Uh, yes, I went up to uh, Yellowstone. Only part of Yellowstone's in Montana. Well, I went through Montana to get to Yellowstone. Well, there that was a roundabout way for you to go. Did I? I I've been to Montana. You went up from the north and came down into Yellowstone? It was Montana. Montana's above Wyoming. Hold on. <laughs> I know what road we took to get to Yellowstone. Okay. I'm pretty sure we went through Montana. Okay. Sorry, this see, we're all learning new things with our five on the spot today. <laughs> Hunter's learning where he actually spent. Yeah, we went up two eighty seven, right? Oh, here. okay. Two eighty seven. Okay. All right. 
I'll let it right slide. Right there. I'll let it slide. By the way, fun fact, Yellowstone National Park is a super volcano. So when that sucker goes, just say goodbye to the U.S. There you go. Fun fact. Uh, all right. <laughs> so my number three is a tie, but I did pick an answer. My number three is New Hampshire. Another LARPy trip. We oh, okay. went up to okay. New Hampshire <laughs> okay. in the fall again. Amazing, gorgeous. If if I mm-hmm. had if I didn't if I it didn't have to survive the winters up there, that, that's where I would it's want to, to live because the place was beautiful. I mean, it was just because if you, I'm I'm from Texas. I've lived in Texas all my life, and there's two colors of trees. <laughs> there is green and dead. Those are the two <laughs> colors trees have in Texas. Now- in the fall, <laughs> they get very pretty here for ten minutes before That's they true. die and fall off. Okay, there's you that. go up in you go up in, in That's true out there. They in the gorgeous. in the northeast during fall. I'm sure some of you are from there. It's just like it's like a painting. It's just it just looks like somebody painted the yeah. the, the landscape. Gorgeous. It's just the you see the entire range yellows and reds and oranges and all sorts of colors. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, to the point where I almost. Points during my trip, I just walked in the woods just to be able to walk around in it. I just forgot why I was there and, and kind of walked around up there. It's, <laughs> Elf so, lost in the woods. <laughs> so, my number three, New Hampshire. Cool. My number three is probably what you'd consider the oddball in my list, and that's Texas. That's right. I said it. It's number three. Actually, Texas... <laughs> Whatever. I married a Texan. I have two Texan children. But no, it's it's really a unique place. It's huge. You can fit the country of Poland in it and drive around it and still be in the state of Texas. Fun fact. DFW Airport is larger than Manhattan. Fun fact. I mean, there's crazy nonsense like this with Texas. It's huge. But the cool thing is it also has a little bit of everything. You go out... You can find dry, arid deserts. You go to Big Bend. You can head not too far away from there, and you've got mountains. You've got beautiful, oh, my goodness, East Texas is the trees and everything. You can go down south and hit Corpus Christi and Galveston and hit the beaches. You've got a little bit of everything. It really is like its own little country in miniature. Not so miniature. It's not like its, it's own little country. It, it, well, yes, they've been their own country for ten whole years. They're very proud of it. They'll never let you forget it. <laughs> And, yeah, but no, it's it truly is a unique place, and it's been really good to us and our family, so I can't say anything about that. The summers here are horrendous. Dear heaven, I'm going to become like some kind of snowbird or something because it, that dog is in the cat food again. What has gotten Feast into- Feast oh, in my, the cat land. Well, now we know why she's chubby. Okay. Thief. All right. my <sighs> Me? It's you. My number two is the great state of Hawaii. Oh my gosh, how did I? Mm. Her list is now invalid. My list is Hawaii. now invalid. That was, mm. for, be, being a young lad, growing up in the great state of Texas, I did not have to leave my state <laughs> to, <laughs> to, go, to, to go on vacations. <laughs> so, I, 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 throughout my entire youth, all the way to college, I had been to Texas... Oklahoma and New Mexico. <laughs> if you would have asked young me if I'd ever be going on a trip to Hawaii, I would tell you you were insane. That would never happen in my lifetime. <laughs> but I got married to this person, and then we went to Hawaii for our honeymoon, and it was a trip of a lifetime. It yeah, was amazing. I hope it's not a trip of a lifetime. hope we get to get the girls back someday. But yeah. it was awesome. It was just it was like jaw, literally jaw dropping. Yeah, All we spent most we of the day with our cameras going. Do you see that? <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, you'll just be driving down the road, and there's this waterfall. This this like it's some, not even some, on the something map out for of a, out of, something that looks like it's CG. It's so beautiful. This waterfall off to the side. You drive a little more, and there's this little inlet off to the side with all this gorgeous you know boats floating around and just amazing drive a little further you see like a lava tube that you can get that out was of, so get out cool. of your car and just go exploring a lava you could have tube. driven your car through it and it, shredded it, the tires but it's huge we drove up to the top of the mountain in the middle well, of the big, most of the top well, of the mountain. almost to the top of the mountain as far as it goes it says if you go any further you're crazy that, well basically that's yeah. where we stop and have all but terrain there's this mountain, gorgeous mountain. You're above the clouds. The clouds are below you, and you drive down. I mean, we're like it's like in the 30s, and then you drive down, <laughs> yeah. and it's in the 80s. 
and beaches are amazing. The food is off the charts. Oh my gosh, amazing! It's just a, it's, it's. I fixed my list. We're good. It's it's amazing. <laughs> You axed your number one and made it Hawaii. <laughs> I'll explain things All right. when I get to so it. I can't say any more than that. It it, it, oh. it it was a trip to remember. It, it yeah, was that awesome. that was a ridiculous. Like I'm speechless about that trip. So number two is a tie because to me they're basically the same because I I grew up there, <laughs> and that's Wyoming slash Colorado. I I lump them together because. That's a cheat. For Wyoming, it's not really a cheat if you're from there, okay? Let me explain, because in Wyoming... What she's saying is she, she had one of those two as her number one, <laughs> moved it down, <laughs> combined it with her number two, so now she can have... Move, 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 <laughs> spoilers! <laughs> and... No, but really, truly, like, they're pretty much the same. No, so, Wyoming is, is not near as cool as Colorado, no offense. Well, here, okay. Not near as cool. The atmosphere is very, very similar. Once you hit the Tetons, the... you're done. What? There's no, re- this... there's no reason to go further north. <laughs> oh my gosh, you did not just say this. There is so much to see. It... Yes, okay, you need to be more outdoorsy to enjoy Wyoming than Colorado State, because Colorado actually has big cities in it. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. We, in Wyoming, to go like shopping for school and stuff, typically drove down to Denver to get our clothes and stuff because, you know, the selection was better and it was the big city. But, no, I I love the mountains. I grew up with them. I like the four seasons. I like being able to take a quick drive and just being there. The summers aren't as hot. I'm used to it being arid, so the dry air, whatever, doesn't bother me. I don't miss the wind. Wyoming is really windy, especially up the I-25 corridor. Good heavens, if you've ever lived there, you know, or driven through there. 9.9 days out of 10, it's windy. But no, it's, it's absolutely stunning, gorgeous. Great outdoorsy, amazing wildlife. Just a lot of things to see and do there. I'm, I'm with you, Jobby. Well, I mean, it's awful. What <laughs> is wrong? Most of you people is, don't even it know. Is, you take Colorado. What? And take everything cool about Colorado and remove it. And you're left with Wyoming. <laughs> F- fun fact. Are you done? Oh, I'm just getting started. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Fun fact. Go ahead. My number one used to be part of Wyoming used to be part of my number one. And that is the great country of Texas. Good Lord. Is number one. Wyoming, a little piece of Wyoming. Was part of Texas. The best piece of Wyoming. What? Never. Used to be part of Texas. I knew when I was a kid we had the map of Texas. What part of Wyoming is it then? It's it's like the southeast little chunk of the southeast part of Wyoming used to be Texas. Look it up, folks. (laughs) Texas, like she said, every almost every type of area is in Texas. They have mountains. (laughs) They have mountains. They have piney woods. They have coastline (laughs) with beaches. They have Amazing history, amazing. The best food in the in the United States is in Texas. Uh, no, best barbecue, nope. best nope. Tex-Mex, best. Of course, they're gonna have cattle, best Tex-Mex. Best, uh, best, best cows. Cow- no, best cows. No. Best beef. No. Best... I've said my piece. Have you? <laughs> my family Texas. actually ranchers. There's no, in there's Wyoming. no rainforest in Texas. You got me there. Houston comes pretty close. Houston is pretty much a rainforest. Houston is pretty much a rainforest, guys. I lived there for a while. It's a rainforest. It's awesome. Texas is awesome. Mm, mm. I can't vouch for certain aspects of Texas, but... Yeah, like most of it. No, I'm I'm talking about terrain and scenery. I'm not talking about anything else. Hmm. But Texas... Oh, terrain and scenery. Wyoming and Colorado win hands down. Wyoming is just a, a dust bowl of... Where do you get dust bowl? Wind, there is a, okay, wind. there is a chunk of Wyoming that is ugly dust bully. Because it's got some prairie section. That's fine. But the rest of it's gorgeous. Texas. There's an ugly... Oh my gosh. Whatever. <laughs> huh. Your country was just a... Your, dumb. Your, your, your state was just a territory. Yeah, well, we were a country. Yeah, well, we let women <laughs> vote before you hillbillies got around to it. So, yeah. That's right progressive that's us and we got six okay flags. there's a lot six of six flags over texas we were french spanish mexican american and that thing that we don't talk about <laughs> that thing that we don't talk about interesting 
So what's your number one? And I'm guessing it's Hawaii. <laughs> yes. I don't, it's, you know, it's funny. I don't think of it. To me, it, it was so surreal. I don't even think about it as one of the states that count to me because it's like, this is my, if I were just, just to be independently wealthy, I would just live there. You have to be I, independently wealthy I, to, to live, live there. there. I mean, it's it's an island. Everything has to be imported. Everything. So the prices there of everything is outrageous. <laughs> and it's just... but it's, Sorry, I read the chat. Oh, my gosh. Jobby said he was in Wyoming, and the buffalo were trying to get on the bus to get out of Wyoming. <laughs> oh, my gosh! <laughs> they were climbing on the bus and said, take me out, get me out Is of here. Is that so? Oh my gosh, you guys are such trouble. I don't know why I find that so funny. Yeah, because you're being... Anyway, more about Hawaii and how amazing it is. It is, it's amazing. And it's gorgeous, but it's super expensive. But it was, it was gorgeous. And I don't usually like super humid places that stay the same temperature all year round. Hawaii was definitely the exception to that. Oh my goodness, it was like a home away from home. I've never felt like that anywhere except for like my home state and... This was crazy cool. We had so much fun just going and exploring random things that weren't necessarily on the, you know, go see this as a tourist kind of thing. And just the stuff and, and the locals were funny too because we'd ask, you know, because um, they talk about, you know, you can go and watch the, the lava going into the ocean. But we were looking and it was past this point where they have like this little really flimsy door don't like go like any further you die <laughs> that was like it had a sign on it was like don't go past this point and the locals are like yeah after 10 p.m everybody just walks out there to go look at it it's like oh all That's right crazy you just like walking they just go walk through up, the thing and go yeah just go walk up to go watch the, the lava fall it was like wow um yeah it, it just stuff like that that it, it was just so I don't know. It was just amazing. And just being outdoors, it was she like, flew a plane. Like, I did. I actually got to fly a plane because you were crazy enough to let me sit in the front seat. That was, I was in the back. You were. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I, it looks like they don't exaggerate in the movies. If anything, it, it's underplayed just how green everything is. It's crazy. So, anyway, ranting about Hawaii. So, I strongly considered Florida for my list, but if you've been to Florida, that humidity is Woo! bonkers. No. It is crazy bonkers. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's humidity. I thought that Texas is... was humid, and I went New... there, and I was just... The cars you, you like, you, were fogged over. You walk, you, walk out, the you walk out of the hotel, and it's just like, whoosh, sweat. I'm like... This, we, this is crazy. The first time it's we 70 our, degrees and I'm pouring sweat. <laughs> first time we took our video camera to Dice Tower Con, we James. took it outside. It, the, the cover filmed over and we had to wait and like clean off the video camera to be able to film because it was so The only place over. I've been to that is more humid than Florida is Panama. That place is crazy. Sound went out? I think you're making stuff up, Tommy. <laughs> Bye, James. I don't think so. Everybody else, this is here. I have no drop frames. This mic's on. I think it's Tommy. Hold on. I mean, just <laughs> Let's try it here. Yeah. Yep. Nope, we're fine. Yep, it's all you, Tommy. All right. <laughs> that was cool. That was interesting. That is, we'll, we'll do these, we'll, we'll yeah, these non-board game lists every once in a while. That's, That's fun. fun. That's fun. Random. Random. You forgot Hawaii. <laughs> I don't think of it. It's like, to me, it's like a whole nother just... That's that's like my happy place. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even think about it. So Alaska in exactly two months <laughs> will be on this list, I guarantee you. I told you it's my number five. It's probably gonna be my number three. <laughs> I'll shove Texas out of the way for <laughs> No reaction. No reaction. Anyway, so what's your favorite state if you've been out of the country i mean if you live out of the country have you visited any states if so what's your favorite i want to know i'm waiting you haven't answered yet the reason i said my list is, is not as incomplete is because i really i haven't been to florida i mean not florida i haven't been to california oregon and washington oh, i've been to california i think those would make potentially make my list i want to go to northern california southern california is interesting but that's not really my scene there's probably it's beautiful though 10 states i haven't been to i'm guessing 10 yeah, you've you've been ten, to more ten-ish, states than me. St Ten-ish states I haven't been to. Yeah, Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, oh Utah. My you worked at Universal. Why? Idaho. It's all the West Coast. Idaho. I haven't been to Idaho. Uh, been to Utah. And then somehow I missed uh, North Carolina. 
Really? Oh, that is odd. North Carolina and Delaware. Nobody's been to any states? I find that hard to believe, people. I think that's people. it. I think I listed all the states I haven't been to. Delaware, North Carolina, and then the West Coast area. That's true. we got to get you over there. There's some pretty cool things to see. No, we're planning a trip to California that's soon. True. Someday. Someday. Live in Oregon. See, I want to go to Oregon. I've heard it's gorgeous there. Yep. That's my kind of weather and mountains and atmosphere. I love it. All right. Well, we, we've been we've been an hour. Alaska. Woo. We'll take Connecticut. Some... Yeah, I want to go to Connecticut. Been, I've been to Connecticut. Ooh. Been to Rhode Island. I have not been to Connecticut or Rhode Island. I want to go. Sacramento. Oh, I went to... Ooh, Sacramento. Yeah, I bet that's gorgeous up there above Sacramento. Gorgeous. East Coast. Well, we're going to have to branch you out, Kabuki. You I've been to everywhere out. on the East Coast, <laughs> but Delaware and North Carolina somehow. Don't ask me how I missed those two states. <laughs> State trees and telephone pole. <laughs> North, Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota's not that bad. I, I, Well, it's not the most gorgeous state. And it's got some brutal winters. I was up there in Fargo slash Moorhead at Concordia University my freshman year. And that was one of the years that Fargo flooded... And we had the National Guard there, and we had to take days off. They actually closed the ca- college so that we could help sandbag for the city. That was exciting. Exciting times. Let me tell you, I, that's a wake-up call. A few of my states are cheat states. Cheat states? Oh, New Mexico. New Mexico has like the best Maine, food. Like, for Maine, I just, I just went over from uh, Hands down. either Vermont, which one? I'm a, I, the New Hampshire border Maine? Whichever state yeah. bordered Maine, my brain's old. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just went beautiful. across the border and came back from Maine just to say I've been there. So that's yeah. kind of a cheat. I did that for uh, Iowa as well. Yeah. I, I just did a go across the border and come back. Lame. It counts. <laughs> Airports don't count, but driving across the border and turning around counts. New Mexico has the best food, I'm just saying. And they have the balloon fiesta. Oh my gosh. If you guys New ever Mexico, get to go to Albuquerque. That is not Tex-Mex. Awesome. Tex-Mex. It's not Tex-Mex. Mex. No, I like New Mexican cuisine better than Tex-Mex. Sorry. It's better. It tastes better. Better flavor. Now, te- get... Texan barbecue is amazing. Tex-Mex, pff, boring. <laughs> wow. I like New Mexican. It's good. New Mexican. I miss that food. I don't even like how that sounds, New Mexican. <laughs> you just couldn't handle the heat. All right, oh. folks. I think that may be it for us. We'll answer some last few questions. We were really random tonight. You and guys did a good to job. Check. We weren't random. We spent a half hour talking about a bunch of games. And a half an hour we talking about states. We did many <laughs> reviews of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. That's pretty good. Nine plus the random. If you count yes, the random so one. nine games. That's we, not too shabby. Nine mini reviews. Ooh... Very cool. Florida is nice if you like back sweat. I agree. Ew. <laughs> I dread. I when we went to Dice Tower Con, I dreaded leaving the hotel to go to the convention center. Yeah. Just the walk. Just the walk. It was. Con. It wasn't even a hundred yards <laughs> from the hotel the to humidity. the convention center, and you would be look like you ran a marathon going across that hundred yards. <laughs> Your glasses instantly fog up. You gotta take them off. Then you're like. <laughs> Contacts, contacts, <laughs> great in Florida. I'm out. Of, I can see without my glasses, but I'm just joking. But anyway, it's, it's it was bad. It was glasses fog up, and you immediately feel clammy. It's just. Did you pre-order Mystic Veil vale Conclave? Say yes. No. What? Here's the reason why. I am almost never going to do a pre-order again. And here, oh. Here's why. Oh, okay. Because. Oh, I know why. The last time I pre-ordered something, <laughs> I put I had four games. Four games. Two were pre-orders, and both of them said they were going to be out in two weeks. Okay? So we had two pre-orders <laughs> and two other games. The other two games were games I was like, I wanted to play now. I thought, okay, I'll just add these pre-orders on. They'll be out in a week, and then I'll get my two cool games with the pre-orders to get the free shipping. <laughs> One game came out on in time. So I had two regular games and a pre-order game that came out in a week. The other game didn't come out for three months. So what? I had a choice. I could cancel my order (laughs) and reorder the three games. But being the stubborn person I am, I'm like, no. (laughs) This game's going to come out in a week or two. And then a week, three weeks, and then four weeks, and it's five weeks, and six weeks. Way to open up that can of worms there, guys. Thanks. Thanks so, for that. <laughs> the only way I'll ever do a pre-order is if it's by itself. 
So, it supposedly comes out tomorrow. <laughs> that pre-order game that was originally going to come out a week ago, and it oh got delayed gosh. a week. See, if I would have pre-ordered it, it would have been delayed a week. And he'd be hopping on the table, jumping up and down, throwing a tantrum right now. Yeah, I, I get into He's these. He's one step away from it. He I get didn't even into these order rants. it. I like to get, get, get energized. <laughs> so, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be going to Cool Stuff every 10 minutes. Just like this, too. When it comes available, <laughs> I will buy that like game. One of those creepy puppets on strings typing. Or but something. I learned my lesson with pre orders. I will not, unless it's by itself, I will not pre order a game. And the thing is, if you pre order a game by itself, then you're paying full shipping because it doesn't meet the 100 bucks to get the shipping. Rant over. <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask you how you do it, and you're supposed to say fine and move on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what grinds my gears? <laughs> I should open that. I should be my opening whenever I go on the rants. This is your therapy session. <laughs> I just... Tell me about your pre-orders. <laughs> I definitely am opinionated about certain things. I'm easy going about a lot of things. Certain things get up in my craw. <laughs> and that's one of them is games that they keep pushing back the pre-order date over and over and over again. Done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Tell yes, me. he I, types I, like that at work. Have you watched him? <laughs> I just want I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I do that when people walked in walk in <laughs> my area to look busy. <laughs> Please say yes you do that. That'd be amazing. I can just imagine you're oh, like severe or somebody walking by you doing that. That's awesome. Mm. Oh, you guys are wonderful. That was All right, fun. I think that's it. I, whew, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm going to have to go like give him some See, blood my, pressure medicine. My heart rate's up to 88 a minute. Uh, <laughs> I usually am running around 60, 60 or so. I'm at 88. Whew. It's got me worked up. Don't talk about those pre-orders, I, I'm, in my, I'm in my fat burn zone talking <laughs> great <laughs> about pre-orders. <laughs> Woo! If we play a game of pit right now, you'd probably die. All right. Well... This Thursday. I have no idea what's going on yet, so what are, what are we doing Thursday? We will... I don't know. I'm thinking a versus the internet, but I haven't figured out what we're going to do yet. People have been asking for compatibility again. So, you guys love that. So, in the, all quickly that. in the chat before we leave, or down in the comments... Don't ask him any questions. Let us know what uh, live play uh, versus the internet... Ooh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Versus live play or versus the, the internet you'd like to see Thursday... Again, when you when you want to be a versus the internet, it has to be very simple and straightforward to do via the internet. Even though we got the delay down to five seconds or so, it's we can do a lot of things, but we can't have like hands of cards and things like that. <laughs> Hiding on a desk with a periscope—that's a pretty good plan. Get him Red Bull. He doesn't need Red Bull, people. I'm just get me worked up. <laughs> He's now I'm at ninety-two. Whew, I gotta calm down. I'm what? Gonna... I think that thing's wrong. <laughs> You're in a pot. Whatever, when, I, when I'm do exercising, it's like 130, 140. I know, you're about to explore. All right. That's it. Exodus. Bye. Carl wants Fog of Love again. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, you come over Thursday night, me and you'll play Fog of Love. It'll be, what's the next What's the next scenario? Oh, Lord. Me and Carl can be, uh, Oh Lord. let's see what me and Carl can do. Oh, no. I, high School Sweethearts would have been magical. High School Sweethearts? That would have been magical. Let's see. We can either do, I know what I want, <laughs> or we give it a year. That's more. That's probably more like it. Me and Carl will play, we'll, we'll give it a year. Oh, please. Oh, <laughs> we'll give it a year. See if it works out. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. That would be, that'll go viral. Okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. I can breathe. Now my heart rate is... Alright, do an official exit. We'll officially, officially, we'll see you officially on Thursday. Yes, please, in the comments, though, let us know. Put in your vote what you want to play. We're up for just about anything. So, can't wait to see you on Thursday. Bye! Find the cursor! <laughs>